So you could be authentic as who such. I was. I could I yeah. could really be who, who uh, I could express in what I call my teaching my authentic self, and uh, and it got stronger and stronger. And ultimately, after being in India for about two and a half years, I did have the great fortune of meeting Master uh, Panchaji. Uh, uh, and when I met him after having a very few conversations, he was a very powerfully enlightened man. Uh, he, he, he really set me free. I mean, but how do you know? How did you know at the time he was a powerfully enlightened man? Uh, well, I knew because uh, because uh, after f a first meeting with him, uh, he um, just after having a brief conversation, you know, he powerfully affected my my. Uh, my consciousness. In other words, I, 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 I had a glimpse of my own true nature after meeting for a few minutes. And what does that mean, a glimpse of your true, own true nature? Well, um, well, the first thing that happened was when I, w when I went to meet him, as I said, I'd already met many teachers and I was also fed yeah. up with the whole teacher and guru situation. I, so I wasn't really I'd, I'd had several teachers and I'd been very disillusioned by many, so I said I'm, uh, you know, I'm I forgot what I, I said, something like, um, I don't have any expectations. And he said, oh, that's good. <laughs> then he burst out laughing. Yeah. So that, that made me very curious. But the second day I met him, I was, uh, I was asking him uh, ab about effort and the need to make, how much effort one needed yeah. to make on the spiritual path. And he said, and it was very soft, it was very softly, he said, he said, you don't have to make any effort to be free. And when he uttered those words, you don't have to make any effort to be free, I suddenly I saw with uh, I saw within in my own mind there was uh, I saw a, a, a brook that was uh, moving down uh, falling, moving down a hill and as the brook was moving I could see the water was free and I realized that that was my own my own true nature was that I'd always been free I had never been unfree and that 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 bondage or psychological uh, emotional and psychological bondage and unenlightenment had only been uh, a dream it had been an illusion it had never been true and then. And uh, this happened really within a split second when I was just pausing for a minute, and he, and he said, that's it. And I looked up at him and I said, how did he so know? So he recognized it. Uh, yeah, and I was wondering, who yeah. is this guy? How did he know what, it, what my inner experience yeah. was? And then he burst out laughing. So then I knew I wasn't with an ordinary person, for sure. Yeah. And then finally, uh, you know, I spent about three weeks with him. Uh, we spent, you know, uh, uh, every day we spent, you know, most of the day together. But there was two other, there was two other discussions I had with him. Uh, uh, one was, what's the difference between what the Buddhists speak about when they speak about emptiness as the ultimate nature of all things? And in Vedanta, they often describe fullness, the, the, the fullness of reality. And I wanted to know what was the difference between em emptiness and fullness, because uh, I was very concerned about that, because my original spiritual experience, my original awakening of cosmic consciousness was more an experience of fullness, that, that, that there was this abs self-absolute. Uh, it, 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 not the not an experience of emptiness, and I wanted to know what what was what was more true. What I what I'd experienced on these Buddhist meditation retreats, or what had spontaneously revealed itself to me in this experience of cosmic consciousness. And he said, "Fullness and emptiness are two sides of the same coin." Mm. So when he said that, this had become quite a problematic question for me. So what, that the, the question disappeared. So I, that was gone. And then finally, when I told him what had happened to me when I was a teenager, when I, I told him about this experience of cosmic awareness and what had happened, he said, you already know everything. And when he said, you already, that was the end of my, my doubts, shall we say, went away. And, and then he, after that, he said, you know, something enormous is going to happen now. And I didn't know what he was talking about. And then um, it was a couple of other things that happened. When he said, you don't have to make any effort to be free, well, I, after that, I went to my hotel room and, it, and I was meditating quite a bit in those days. And I sat on my bed and started meditating. And, and then, because I, I started making effort in the meditation process, and as I started to make effort, I got a headache. <laughs> so I, I couldn't meditate anymore because whenever I did, I, I kind of would get a headache. And then after after I, I was with him for about three weeks, I was going to leave for a few weeks and come back, and he just burst started laughing as I was leaving. And then I. I, I he, he was telling me something big was going to happen. So I sat on, I was sitting on the train in, in the train station uh, leaving, and I suddenly was pulled within. I was pulled into a very deep state of meditation. But I wasn't meditating. I was being meditated. I, right? so I was being meditated by a, by a very powerful presence. And then that was when it, this, this catalyzed kind of a, a, an, in, an internal process, an energetic process, which lasted about three weeks, in which 
the experience was of being consumed by an unseen presence, is the only way I can describe it. And I was actually quite frightened and also very excited and very thrilled because I knew whatever I'd been looking for was, was actually happening. So the se and, I, 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 and I wrote this in my diary at the time, if this doesn't stop, you know, there'll be nothing left of me. Because I was aware there was something, there was, there was a presence that seemed to be following me around everywhere that I couldn't see, but I knew it was there. And at times it would over wash over me and, and, and overwhelm me. Uh, and then at times I'd fall back into an ordinary state of consciousness. But it, I, I, could, I felt that whoever I was, uh, whoever Andrew was, was being consumed, literally being consumed by this entity that I could not, that I could not see. And at the same time, I, there, was a burn, there, was a, there was a powerful inner experience of burning, it was a burning sensation, of a tremendous heat. So I felt I was being consumed in, in kind of a, 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 a fire, a kind of a, some kind of internal fire. And this, and in the same time, as this was happening, when I was meeting friends in New Delhi at the time, I was telling them what had happened, what was happening. As I described it to them, they were they were drawn into the same state of consciousness that I was, mm. and I was, and then I was like, wow, well, what's happening here? This isn't something that's just happening to me. This is something that's happening now to me, and anybody who really gives me their, their attention and their, 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 own, their own sympathetic interest seems to be being affected by what's so happening like to me. So you're a catalyst somehow. So, I knew, so, so I basically, I became a spiritual teacher overnight without even understanding really what was happening. And then when I went back, this, and this happened to many, many people. At the, you know, like instantly, they, they were, having, they were, they were mm. affected by this. And so, um, then when I went back to see him, uh, I told him, and he just burst out laughing. He said, I knew this was going to happen. And then he, at the time, he, he felt he was going to die because he was very sick. And so he said, you're the one I've been waiting. It was a very, it was a classical story. He said, you're the one I've been waiting for. I want you to accept responsibility for the work. I give you my robe and bowl, which is, a, which is what a Zen master does to his disciples. So he was, he was formally giving me his his work. I mean, I, and I, I was just, I just saw, sat there and kind of heard him. Of course, he didn't end up dying. He, he got better and he lived for a, for a much longer time. And, and uh, later on, we ended up having some philosophical disagreements, which, in, you know, which led us to kind of go in different directions. But that was how it all started. And were you aware of a change in your personality starting at this, chain, at this time? Yeah. Uh, well, what happened was that my, uh, I discovered an absolute source of confidence that didn't have anything to do with my personality or my ego. It came from... It came so from it was it. like an inner strength that came out. Yeah, well, there was, it's, it's, it's an absolute conviction. It's absolute conviction yeah. in, in consciousness, really. But were the things that... Did you find, like, you used to get angry at certain things, you didn't get angry at them anymore, that kind of thing? I'm looking for more details in your personality structure. No, I've never really been... I mean, I've never been an angry person. I don't, you know, I've never been an angry person, so it wasn't that, it wasn't that the issues with anger or anything dissipated as much as, uh, as, a, as an abiding sense of, ins of, of self-doubt and, uh, and insecurity and self-loathing, which is kind of the postmodern psychological disease, which is very common, uh. which I suffered uh, from quite a bit, you know, as a young man. Uh, that that dissipated, you know, the, the self-loathing dissipated the, and, and the self-doubt and, the, and, and the, this abiding sense of insecurity that, w that was very much related to, to my own self, as my own self-identity. That, that all fell away. Mm. And do you feel there's still a process of falling away or is it complete now? Um, I feel that, uh, no, I, I don't, I mean, there's two things that are happening. In other words, I feel in terms of wherever I'm at, wherever I, where in terms of my own development, uh, is as far as I can see quite stable. I, 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 I'm first. First of all, I, I don't know how objective I can be about myself. You know, it's very difficult for any individual to be truly objective about themselves. But my sense, my sense of it is that that, that my own experience is a, is a very strong stability. That's unwavering, but at the same time, I'm evolving as a teacher. I'm developing, and this is what gives me the greatest confidence. To such a degree that, if people have seen me speak ten years ago and they come see me speak, they're like, "Wow, this is totally new." Even if people haven't seen me speak in five years or even three years, they come and they they see I've moved on. And so, because of course now, you know, in, in my teaching career, I'm very much interested in in the in the evol in the evolutionary dimension yeah. of enlightenment.